Hmm. All right. Hello. Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Friday. I'm Mark from 91. Hey, Real Chick Throck. Um, thank you guys for being here on Instagram. If you want to hop over to YouTube, I'm Maggie, the substitute teacher, and you can see the side by side over there. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So happy Fry. Yay, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you had a good week and um, everybody is doing well. For anybody new here, hi, I'm Maggie, your substitute teacher. Welcome to my struggle cooking class where I am not. I have one earring roll. I was getting the pearls on. Just look, one moment, please. Let's try this again. I am not, thank you. I am not a professional chef. I am not a professional YouTuber. Clearly, I'm just a boy mom and a home cooker. Uh, thanks, Michelle. I have two teenage boys, but they are with their dad, so I can slow down and take my time tonight. I don't have the greedy gong gongs circulating around me, but, um, here is where I do live cooking demonstrations and we'll call it a cooking class for you all. Um, I have always struggled with weight, but now in my 40s, I'm 46, I have finally found what works for me um, and that is working with a metabolic specialist. So there, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and Instagram there. I have a list of foods that I can have, and I have a list of foods that I have to avoid. But I really like trying new recipes, recreating stuff that I see on social media, media with you all. That's what we're going to do tonight. Um, I saw a shrimp scampi recipe that I want to try. So we're going to make that. But I'm also going to make a smoothie. I don't know why. It's like, that's such a summer... I don't even want to call it a treat, maybe like a summer staple. And I used to make them all the time, but I don't think I've made one yet. So we're going to make a fruit smoothie. Um, should have checked to make sure I have all the ingredients. We'll wing it if we don't. Um, but yeah, I am maintaining, if I stop celebrating stuff, an 80 plus pound weight loss with at least 20 more to go. Um, I used to be pre-diabetic, I used to have elevated cholesterol, and I used to have borderline blood pressure. All of that is normal now with no medication uh, because I've completely changed the way that I eat and snack. And so that's what we do here. So whatever brings you here, you are most welcome. If you love to cook like me, if you love to eat like me, um, yeah, sit back and relax. I usually go a couple of hours take my time. We'll do the smoothie and then we'll do the uh, shrimp scampi. Uh, so I'll do the cooking demonstration. Feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat. I'll try to answer them when I come up for air. And um, then I think we have time tonight. I'll pull up a chair and um, actually eat my dinner. I usually only eat about two meals a day and I usually try to either live stream or take pictures of what I'm eating so I share that with you all. So welcome to the happy, wholesome, family-friendly side of YouTube. Um, let's take attendance. I'll get my uniform on, get my glasses with the anti-fog treatment, and then we will uh, get started. I see Padilla's here. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Padilla, Veggie Veggie, one of my day one scholars is here. I am your substitute teacher. You all are my scholars. The live chat is our uh, study hall. Um, <laughs> I guess the apron is going to be my school uniform, right? So yeah, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, have I ever made this shrimp scampi before? No. Has that ever stopped me? No. Uh, I see Real Chicks Rock is here, and thank you for the compliment, Michelle. But yeah, sit back, relax, and uh, let's have some fun. 
I did do some laundry. I need to get my uniform on. I think I have my white apron ready. So let me show you guys. All right. Is it working? Okay. <clears throat> I'm wearing neutral colors today, so ideally I would have the khaki apron, but I did whites, so that's what we're going to wear today. But I do have Maggie merch. You guys can see the link in the description. I am going to be wearing the Maggie apron in white. I love um, how crisp this looks. It makes me look like a professional chef, which I am not, clearly. Um, but this is in the Zazzle store. Let's see. I don't know if one of the moderators wants to drop the link to the Zazzle store. They're about $20, but there's always a coupon, especially like now around the holidays. Um, so the apron comes in white, khaki, and yellow. We have the standard apron, the Maggie apron. It's got pockets, love it. It's got the logo. You can customize it for free with your name or whatever you like. Um, we've got the uh, nice, like sturdy linen material and an adjustable neck strap. So, as you've seen with mom, I always love wearing aprons in the kitchen. It makes me feel like, I don't know, it's just the uniform for what I'm doing here. And uh, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm dressed for the occasion, right? All right, so, <clears throat> hey, Mark wants to know what's going in the smoothie. Let's see what I have on hand. So for me, uh, smoothies are really just fruit, yogurt, liquid of your choice. We'll probably do almond milk <coughs> and um, um, ice. Y'all know you can make smoothies as fancy or as basic as you want to be. And smoothies are like omelets, like one of those things that I just look and see what I have on hand and toss it together. I do have some fresh fruit, but if I have frozen fruit, I prefer frozen fruit excuse me, in my smoothies because it keeps them colder. So I did find some frozen blueberries, but here's the apron. Y'all can see <clears throat> Instagram and YouTube. Got the pockets. All right, so let me get my blender. Well, for me, I'm using the Ninja, and I'm going to work on this cookbook for y'all. I know I need to get it together, but I just kind of eyeball it. But depending on uh, how many servings you want. I just want one for me, just for me. Then, uh, you know, small handfuls, because once you blend it together, especially once you add ice, the volume really increases. So let's get my equipment out. Need to put that treatment on my glasses. Okay, so I'm using the little Ninja food processor, which you can use whatever blender. Thank you. Michelle likes the apron. Yes, the Maggie merch. When I started, my YouTube channel is only six months old. Thank you all so much for being here and for helping the channel to grow. But my scholars actually said, we need Maggie merch. So I worked with a freelance artist to get this Maggie logo that you all know and love. And I've got a store where we put it on everything. I know someone asked for Maggie oven mitts, so I haven't forgotten. Uh, I just don't have those yet. But you all can take a look on the um, uh, Zazzle store or the Teespring store. Links are in the description, I believe. And um, if there's anything else you would like, let me know. All right. So I'm just going to throw these in in any order. Um, I found some frozen blueberries. I probably should make sure I have all ingredients first, but I'm not. Um, I found these in the freezer. These probably came from the giveaway bag. So this is blueberry high bush. I don't know what that is. Are blueberries in low bushes? I don't even know what a high bush is, but um, I have some frozen blueberries. Um, if you have pretty much any fruit you can put in a smoothie, I prefer frozen strawberries because I like the um, like that nice pink color that you get with frozen strawberries, but this was the first thing to jump out at me. So I'm going to cut into this and I'm just going to take a couple uh, chunks and you can also blend. I do have some fresh strawberries, so let's do that. Let's put some fresh strawberries. We'll do a strawberry. All the blueberries. Hmm. I'm thinking, let's get into this first. 
y'all can put all kind of stuff in. Um, I do have banana here, but the fruits that I eat are the lower sugar fruits. I usually eat sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free. So for me, uh, that's like apples and berries and whatnot. I have banana here for the kids. I don't eat like banana, mango, papaya, all that good stuff. I'm trying to get the rest of this weight off. So we got some, ooh, these are nice and crumbly, but I got some frozen blueberries. So I'm just going to put a couple chunks in here. I just kind of put equal portions of everything and then blend it together. That's not going in there. So I just do kind of like a layer so that I could cover the bottom. Once I get a layer ish, I'm like, okay, that's good. So we have frozen blueberries. Let me put this in a Ziploc bag to keep it from falling apart in the fridge or freezer. I like my smoothies cold. Hi, Mark says bananas are too sweet. I love bananas. I'm trying to get the rest of this weight off. I've got a ways to go. Well, I mean, I've done pretty good. Actually, I've done quite well. I'm down 80 pounds, but look, I am not the food police. Please eat what works for you. I would love to toss some bananas. And bananas are great in a smoothie because they give you that nice creaminess if you like them. But on my list of foods that I can have, the foods that I can have are the low, the fruits that I can have are the low sugar fruits. So, but hey, if you're going to eat sugar, probably the best sugar to eat is like natural sugar that comes from a whole food and not that processed, you know, sugar, right? All right, so let's put our blueberries up. All right, so for me, one of the ingredients that I always put in a smoothie uh, is yogurt. You can do frozen yogurt if you like. Y'all know that I'm dairy-free, so this is what I'm using, my goat's milk yogurt. This came from Whole Foods. This is basically like a substitute for Greek yogurt for me. I know it's kind of hard to tell with the light, but it's almost empty, so I want to get to the to the bottom of the bottle. Uh, the more yogurt uh, you put in there, the creamier it'll be. The more fruit and ice and liquid you put in there, the more like icy crystally it'll be if that's a word so i'm just going to get a spatula and get the rest of this yogurt out go ahead and use um what's left right. spatula action for caudel all right so so this is yogurt um, that's made from goat's milk so that's how i stay dairy free. I love milk and cream and cheese and all that, but it doesn't love me back. Uh oh. So yeah. So just a little bit of yogurt there. Let me clean up. There are also other yogurts that you can use if you're trying to avoid dairy. You could have coconut milk yogurt and almond milk yogurt. I think I have some in the fridge, so I'll get them out and show you guys so you always have some options. Ah, Mark wants to know what doctor I went to. <laughs> I'll show you. All right, so here's another substitute. This is so delicious, coconut milk yogurt alternative. So if you're trying to avoid dairy, you can get other plant-based yogurt. So this one is made from coconut instead of dairy. Ah, Caudel is here. I was just thinking about, yeah, I use a spatula for the yogurt. 
Uh, Mark, I don't know if you can see on Instagram because it's backwards. Yeah, and with the light locked in wellness. Um, if you go, I don't know if it's in the description, but um, I went to locked in wellness, L O C K E D I N W L L N E S S. Uh, she's a metabolic specialist here in the Atlanta area, but she does take clients all over the globe. And I usually talk about this, but I guess I haven't in a while. But um, I, I went into her office and she did a test, which was a cheek swab. Uh, so like a long Q-tip thing and then you swab on the inside, kind of like a DNA test. And then some hair samples, a little bit of hair from the back, not a lot. And then she sent it off and then I got a report of all the foods that my body tolerates well. And then the foods that my body does not tolerate well. And food sensitivities... Uh, unlike food allergies, you don't necessarily have a violent reaction. You may just keep eating it and not know why you have bloating or weight gain or joint pain or, you know, bad sleeping, bad hair, bad skin. There's just so much stuff. So for me, I had a lot of joint pain that I thought, oh, I'm just getting older. But um, 48 hours after I changed my diet, when I went on this elimination diet, which is just how I eat now, the pain went away. I was limping along, bad knee, bad back, bad ankle. Um, and now when I eat off of my plan, I feel it. So I always say, it's not what you eat from time to time. Enjoy your life and celebrate, but it is what you eat all of the time. So I've changed what I eat all of the time. All right, so we've got our frozen blueberries and our goat's milk yogurt so far. I know y'all like the close up, so I just toss that in here. If that's not enough yogurt, I'll keep the coconut milk yogurt out. And you do need some kind of liquid in a smoothie. Maybe that's obvious, but I don't know what people know. I had to learn, so I'm here to tell y'all. Uh, I'm going to be putting almond milk in my smoothie. This is just silk, um, but I always go for the unsweet. Uh, I have to watch out some of these plant-based milks, like the ones that are flavored, even the vanillas and the chocolates. They have extra sugar, and um, everything that I eat is supposed to be under six grams of sugar. And so the unsweetened almond milk has zero grams of sugar. So I'm gonna put some in here again, just kind of eyeball it. I'm gonna go up to, just to cover the fruit, the more liquid that you put in your smoothie, the more drinkable and watery it'll be, um, the less, the more thick and chunky, because we like And we're back. All right, so I just put some unsweetened almond milk in here. This can be regular milk, it could be coconut milk, it could be fruit juice if you have fruit juice. Um, I don't drink fruit juice because I just, it's better for me to eat the fruit. Hey, Celeste, so good to see you. Thank you for being here. If you want to see the side by side view, you can come on over to YouTube. I'm Maggie, the substitute teacher. I hope you're doing well. I miss you. All right, so in here we've got our frozen blueberries, we've got our almond milk, and we've got our yogurt. Um, I'm just gonna put in like a handful of ice, not much. Again, this is kind of like with the burrito, right? A little bit goes a long way. Hi, Lauren. Once we blend it up, the volume will really increase. And then for sweetener, y'all know me and my skinny syrup. So I'm going to pick a syrup that we want to put in here. Let's do the peach. That'll give me some color, right? The peach syrup. You know, so there's no recipe here. I just kind of get creative and toss in whatever I have on hand, whatever I want to try. So you all know that I'm a huge fan of skinny syrups. Um, this is the peach ring flavor burst. This is the little portable size ones that I keep everywhere um, but these are the zero calorie zero sugar um, concentrates so whenever I order beverages coffee tea or whatever I always order them unsweet and then I add my own sweetener so I'm gonna squirt this in here kind of carefully because it is red and it will uh, splash back 
So I gave like um, a nice little squeeze and I'm just going to blend this up. When you're making a smoothie, there's nothing wrong with like, just put some stuff together, blend it up, taste it, see how you like it. If it needs more of something, add more. Mark from 91 says, much appreciated, ma'am. Oh, you're welcome, sir. I came back from a Maryland State Fair. Oh my God, y'all. Can somebody say funnel cake? Can somebody say um, uh, candied apple? Can someone say kettle corn? Why don't y'all put in the chat, what is your favorite carnival food? Mark says, I came back from a Maryland State Fair this holiday weekend. Yes, happy Labor Day, everyone. After gorging myself on funnel cake fried Oreos and soft serve ice cream. Doesn't that sound amazing? What do I like? I like, I think I like the candied apples and the caramel corn, but I'd love to know what's everybody's favorite carnival food. Ah, Mark says on the downside, I experienced all of the bloating, joint pain, and more mess. Y'all, I have a love-hate relationship. Y'all know I love to eat, clearly, but, um, I want to feel better more than I want to eat what I want. So this YouTube channel of mine is really my way of working with the list of what I have to eat, but creating things that I want to eat. All right, so we're going to put the top on here. It doesn't look like a lot, but let's blend it up and see how it tastes. So apologies for the loud sound. It shouldn't be too long. All right, so <clears throat> when I'm blending this, I don't really have a time. I'm just feeling in my hand, the ice chunks still kind of like bang around. And so I'm just blending it until everything kind of whirs around smooth, smoothly. I know that's not a, um, how do you say, that's not really good instruction, but y'all know what I mean. And then sometimes you can just take the, you know, blender apart. Ooh. This is what we have so far. I'm going to put, put it in a cup and, of course, put some whipped cream on it. Let me just taste it. Taste it for sweetness. Taste it for consistency. I see a couple ice chunks in there. And, again, this is blueberry, frozen blueberries, goat's milk yogurt, almond milk, ice cubes, and peach syrup. So I'm making a peach vanilla blueberry smoothie. Oh, Celeste. Hello, my dear. Oh. Celeste and I go way back. Celeste and I worked together before Marcus was born. And Celeste, my scholar, so I'm the substitute teacher because I teach food substitutions. They have a name for Marcus, and it is Swim Shady. I got teenagers. I know you can understand. All right. <clears throat> So let's taste our smoothie. I'm just kicking around, y'all, taking time. The boys are with their dad, so I'm going to take my time. Ooh! <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so good. Okay, I'm going to blend one more time just because I have a couple big pieces of ice in there, but the flavor is great. My almond milk is a vanilla almond milk, so it has kind of that creaminess. Frozen blueberries are blue and berry. And then the peach syrup gives it that like, mm, mm, I don't know how to explain it. So good. Y'all, I get so excited. Because y'all, I only eat twice a day and I try to wait to eat when I live stream for y'all. So a lot of my excitement comes from I'm hungry. Cardell says... Ooh, Cardell has her carnival food. Yes, let me know whatever, what's um, everybody's favorite carnival food because Mark from 91 just came from the Maryland State Fair. Cardell says, I start off with a Polish hot dog. I may sound ignorant. What is a Polish hot dog? I know Chicago dogs. I know regular dogs. But is that like um, like the bigger, like sausagey ones? And then hours later when leaving, you get a grilled turkey leg. <laughs> Those turkey legs, right? Turkey leg that lasts three days. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh crap. Let me clean up. Let me focus y'all. Hold on. Let's get this blended. I'm going to see 
Let me just put the ice cube, move it around a little bit, see if that blade can get there. But this is excellent. Made it up. I was like, I haven't made a smoothie. And I got a little yogurt up in the top. Y'all know we're team greedy. Get in there. I don't want to waste. Whew. Okay, focus, Maggie. Let's blend this a little bit more. Oh, Mark from 91 says the Polish hot dogs are stacked. Okay, y'all know I'm old and I'm not cool. So is stacked a good thing? Does stacked literally mean like a hot dog on a hot dog? Or does stacked mean a big hot dog? Y'all know I don't know this slang. Maggie's old. Y'all have to keep me cool. I'm not cool. Ah, Caudel says, yes, it's like a sausage dog and you put on lots of mustard. That's another thing. What does everybody put on their hot dogs? I do everything. Mayo, mustard. Okay. Now I had a Chicago dog once with like the tomato and that weird baby pickle thing. That was a lot going on. It was a bit much for me, but I'm a mayo, mustard, ketchup, relish. Yeah, I like everything. Okay. One more blend. Mark says, stacked is a lot of fixings. Okay, thank you for explaining. So that's a lot of toppings on the hot dog. Yeah, so Caudel, um, when you get your Polish dog, I think I got it pretty much blended, y'all. Let's see. He's looking at the consistency. And for me, this is great. This is nice and thick, drinkable in a straw. That's my key. Like, I want it. I want my smoothies thick enough so that you almost can't slurp them up if that makes sense. I don't like them too watery. If you make them too watery, add more fruit or more yogurt, but you're just gonna increase the volume. And I'm trying to do better with my portions, just for one. Okay, so we've got our smoothie. I'm gonna put this in a um, glass. I'm trying to decide what glass to put it in because I want it to look nice. I'm wondering, all right, this is gonna look janky, but I got this little mason jar since we're, since we're talking about county or state fairs. Actually, let me be elegant and put it in a glass. Y'all know it's all about the picture and the presentation. So I have a small glass because if I put it in a big glass and it doesn't fill up, then I'm like, it looks, oh, almost perfect. Y'all, check it out. All right, so before it melts, so this is what we have, our blueberry smoothie. I'm gonna do a little bit of whipped cream. And then of course you need a smoothie straw. <clears throat> Okay, so y'all know I'm usually dairy free, but I don't have my almond cream. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, whipped topping. <laughs> Mark says he likes a smoothie so thick when you hold them upside down, they stick to the cup. That's a thick smoothie. Um, let me just put a dollop on here. Kind of like the, all right, more than a dollop. Kind of like the, what is it? Um, blizzards. All right, so y'all can see that we have our smoothie. Y'all can see. All right, so gotta have a milkshake straw, a big old, bigger one. This one looks kind of janky because the paint is coming off, but let me take a quick picture. One second. I take all my own pictures and they go on my community tab or my Instagram. So y'all have been seeing these, so. Nice blueberry smoothie. I just take several from different angles and then these will get posted. These will go on the cookbook or in the cookbook. I have the template and I even know what recipes we're gonna do. So more importantly, let's taste. All right, I know me and my janky straw. Let me see if I can get a picture with this straw. Whoa.
Yeah. Let's just go for it. Oh, mama. Ooh! Ooh! It's cold at first, of course. And then it's sweet. And then it's creamy. And then right at the end, you know, back here, there's that little tang. Ooh! You know what would have been good in here? Like a couple drops of lemon juice. If you like that tart, I think I'm getting it from the peach syrup. But y'all, cheers. Mm. Woo! Smoothie is delightful. Y'all, I should have been making this all summer. It's almost fall, y'all. Caudel says, sometimes if I get hungry later, I get roasted corn on the cob with butter, Parmesan cheese, and hot sauce. Have y'all ever had that Mexican street corn? <sighs> mm. Shut the front door. All right, let's clean up. Smoothie is excellent. Blueberry peach vanilla. Or whatever you have on hand. All right, now we're going to move on to our shrimp scampi meal. All right, so let's clean up. Oh yeah. Now this is so good and refreshing. Look, why have Smoothie King when you have Maggie King? Mm. Sometimes you get like little chunks of fruit in there. So you got to like get those out. But, um, you know, I've taught both boys how to cook. And I'm all for having a nice meal out. But I want to eat out because I want to. Not because I have to. Or I don't have, you know, any other. I don't know my way around the kitchen. So happy to share what I learned with you all. All right. <clears throat> Y'all know I clean as I go, so this is really me at home in my kitchen. There is no staff. It's just me. So I got to make sure everything. Y'all, Mark says, the Mexican street corn be so good. I'll consider robbing a back. Robbing a bank just to get, buy me one cob, okay. Let's stay on the right side of the law. We are the happy and wholesome family channel. But um, yeah, I don't eat corn. Just like I don't eat the sugary fruits. I don't eat the starchy vegetables. I love corn, but you know, when I get the rest of this weight off, then I'll be able to have what I want in moderation. But you know, when you're trying to lose and I don't count calories, sorry, just clean it up. A little backsplash but you do need to be in a calorie deficit however you want to do it and you know I've shared with you guys all of those diets work right I've done Weight Watchers Nutrisystem they're all fine if you like the food but if you like to eat like me and I think like you all and if you don't like their food then as soon as you can eat what you do like y'all already know you're gonna eat you're going to gain the weight back and then some. And we're back. Sorry about that. All right. I'm going to show you guys a video of the shrimp scampi, just putting everything away. Um, this is um, a chef that I found online. Her channel name, and I put the link in the description. I think it's Moribian, if I'm saying it right. It's kind of like Morocco and Arabian or some kind of hybrid, uh, but a beautiful sister who makes 
delightfully looking food. I've been watching her for a while. So I saw a shrimp scampi recipe. I have some shrimp on hand, so we're gonna try it. I have most of the ingredients. I thought about placing a grocery order to get everything perfect, but I was like, I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna make it work. Like she has parsley. I think I have dried parsley and I gotta make my own chicken broth from chicken bouillon. We'll be all right, cause y'all are here with me. Let me put this away and I'll show you the video and I'll take a quick moment. Like I could have a commercial break. All right, let's see. So I saw this on her Instagram and I'll show you guys. So this is her TikTok or she's on TikTok too, Meribian. Hajar Larba. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Forgive me if I am, but she did a shrimp scampi recipe. So let me show you guys the video and then we'll go through it together step by step. But I always show you what I'm trying to make. All right. Make is the saucy shrimp scampi. It comes together in one pan and under 30 minutes. Start out with a fresh baguette, cut it into slices, and then we're gonna drizzle with some olive oil just like this. Pop in the oven to toast until beautifully golden, and when it comes out, we're gonna brush it with a garlic clove. Now for the shrimp, we're gonna butterfly it, and you can either leave the tail on or take it off, and then we're gonna coat it in all our spices. Over high heat, sear the shrimp until it has some beautiful color, take out of the pan, and then toast your garlic in some butter. Then we'll add the chicken broth, red pepper flakes, black pepper, lemon juice, parsley, and lots of parmesan. Add the shrimp back in, toss, and that's basically it. All that's left to do now is enjoy with the crispy bread. All right. So you guys saw what we're going to try and make this shrimp scampi. You notice that she started off with a beautiful crusty baguette. As much as I love bread, bread does not love me back. So I am actually not going to do it on bread. If you looked at the recipe, she made the shrimp scampi and you can do it with toast. You all saw that we did that not too long ago on a sourdough bread. <sighs> so good. Um, but that was a vacation meal. I actually have some rice wraps that I'm going to try and make a play off of a shrimp egg roll. Meh. We'll see how it goes. Have I ever made it before? No. Has it ever stopped me before? No. So we're gonna give that a try. Um, but she said you can make the shrimp, you can serve it with pasta, you can serve it with bread. I'm gonna put mine in a wrap with uh, some red pepper, whatever veggies I have on hand. Y'all, I'm making it up. And then I'll just use the scampi sauce as a dipping sauce. Mm. Smoothie is excellent. Mark from 91 says, I'm not just outright. <laughs> you're not going to rob the bank. You're just going to convince them to share their wealth with you. It's for a good cause. Absolutely. If money were no object, what food item, not material item, but if you could go to a restaurant and have whatever you want, as much of it, what food item would you want? So I'll let you guys put that in the chat. For me, it would probably be like Alaskan king crab. Because y'all know I'm in Atlanta, so I'm not close to the water. So seafood is kind of expensive here. I'm going <clears> to <throat> be right back. I'm not going anywhere. Just give me a couple minutes. I'm going to mute and put some music on. I'll just leave that on so I don't forget. Seafood, I know, right?
heart. And I'm back. So Celeste says, this is so much fun. You're off to a football game. Enjoy the scampi. Yes, it is football season, y'all. I've got some things I want to try, some chicken wings, all kind of stuff. We're gonna, I cook every day. So find me. Um, whatever works for you all. Come late, leave early. Like they say, Maggie, stay cooking. Hi, Genesis One. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So we are going to make this shrimp scampi. I'm going to start by getting the ingredients that I have together. And um, it doesn't look like it's hard. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for being here, my dear. Uh, it doesn't look hard at all. But y'all know. Let me go ahead and take care of my glasses before I get anything cooking on the stove. Spectacles in the kitchen can be a, um, eh, I won't say safety hazard, but, oh, where are you? Oh dear. You all have seen me go semi-blind in the kitchen. Uh, Mark says shrimp scampi, yes. I don't know if you saw the title. I don't know, does it show the title at the top of Instagram? I see a title, but I'm making shrimp in a smoothie. So we've already made our smoothie. Cheers, happy Friday. If you wanna turn up, put a splash of vodka or something in there and have some for me. But yeah, I'm actually making dinner. I've been waiting to cook for y'all because I've been waiting to eat. I'm putting my lens cleaner on my glasses so I don't go blind. It's not a cleaner, but this fog treatment keeps them from fogging up so that I can cook and read y'all's comments and try to be interactive. But Mark is asking if I'm doing pasta. No, sir. No pasta for me. And you know what? Even though I'm avoiding gluten on this journey, and there are gluten-free pastas. I'm not a huge pasta person. With growing boys, you know, I have two teenage sons. Thank God they're with their dad. <clears throat> um, I cook a lot of pasta because it's easily, you know, easy to get full and it's like very, you know, filling. I'm not a big pasta person. Um, but yeah, I can make it. But we're gonna do shrimp wraps. Let me show you guys what I got. So if anybody was with me a couple days ago when we did the Big Mac egg rolls for the kids and we used the egg roll wrappers, which are <laughs> wrappers. Okay, that was not funny. Anyway, we use the egg roll wrappers for the boys. Of course, they're made from wheat flour, which I'm not supposed to have, but I did and they were good. <sighs> so funny. Genesis one wants to know how's our new air fryer coming along? Excalibur is doing great. You all know we had to get a new air fryer because the old one, the struggle air fryer, it didn't really bother me, but I was told it wasn't a good look. I try to be elegant for you all. You know, I take my classes and I want to make sure that I represent myself well and represent you all well. But my old air fryer, because y'all, it's really me. Like I use this stuff every day. It had a little bit of a warm up sound meaning I think one of the blades from the fan was bent and uh, if you're not familiar with an air fryer I have the oven style so it's kind of like an oven with a fan like a convection oven so it cooks faster and it gets crispy so when you would turn it on it kind of had this <laughs> it had this really bad sound that you all were clowning me about <clears throat> so one of our very generous um, channel sponsors, lifetime sponsors, um, replaced the air fryer, the struggle air fryer with Excalibur and it's coming along great. Y'all, I clean it all the time. I want it to be spick and span. It is whisper quiet. I get in there and I'll wipe. If anything splatters, I make sure it's clean. Jenison, so wanted to hear for the story time. All right, back to the food. Mark says, uh, the moment you said avoiding gluten, you stared at the sourdough bread. 
please don't feel guilty. Have some for me. I love bread. It just doesn't love me back. When I tell y'all, when I was in Europe, I had croissants every day. You don't understand. I'm the one when the bread basket would come, like I could, I'm embarrassed to say, like I could get full on just the bread. Focus Maggie. All right. So if you guys saw the egg rolls for the boys, this has been approved for me um, in moderation. So I'm going to try these. I've never made them before. Spring roll wrappers. So these are made from like rice paper. So I'm going to make the shrimp scampi. And then you can put whatever veggie you want in here. This looks like carrot and cabbage. Um, I have red bell pepper. So I probably should cut that up. Because when I make the shrimp, I want to just go ahead and roll it up. Um, I have red bell pepper and red onion. I don't do carrot. Um, let me see what I have that's green. I should have some lettuce, but I don't. So let's go ahead and prep our uh, veggies then we'll make the shrimp. So I bought these at Whole Foods, just regular red bell peppers. I love um, variety peppers. They are not spicy. They're actually quite sweet. Y'all know we have done stuffed peppers. Uh, these are great. In a stir fry, in an omelet, oh, like Philly cheesesteak with onions and peppers. All right, let's see if we can get it open. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the veggies so we have them prepped and ready on the cutting board. And then we'll make the shrimp and then we'll try and roll it all together and make some lettuce wraps or well, whatever these are called. And I don't have lettuce. Oh my gosh, come on. I don't have nails. Finally. Sorry, y'all. All right, so we have a red bell pepper. I do have eggplant. I have tomato. You know what shrimps can't be that? I don't know. <clears throat> I have some zucchini noodles. I was going to do ah, Mark from ninety one. Um, you were asking about pasta. Oh, what if we do that? Yeah, the bag is winning. Y'all, what if we do, maybe we should do that. Let's do our shrimp scampi on zucchini noodles. You guys, I'll let you choose. Oh my gosh. I just thought an idea. Mark was asking if I was doing shrimp scampi on pasta, and I wasn't. I have these zucchini noodles that I got from Whole Foods. So what I was gonna do is put this as a little bit of a veggie inside our spring roll wrapper since I don't have lettuce. Or I could cook this as the base and then put the shrimp scampi over top of it. Maybe we should do that, y'all. What do y'all want? Zucchini noodles? Okay, Mark, you got it. All right, so then we're not going to cut the onion and pepper. We'll do, I'll make double portion shrimp. So today we'll do it over our zucchini pasta substitute since Mark was asking about pasta. And then tomorrow we'll do the lettuce wrap because I cook every day, y'all. All right, so what are the instructions for this? I don't think it takes long. Cooking instructions. Remove vegetables from container. I can do that. Do you really have to tell? Genesis 1 says over bacon. Ooh, bacon and shrimp would be good. I had bacon this morning. God, don't tempt me. Uh, remove vegetables from container. Briefly saute, steam, or boil, and toss with favorite sauce and veggies. Vegetables, y'all. I have an idea. I think we're just going to toss these into the sauce. Oh, my God, I'm getting excited. Okay, focus, Maggie. <clears throat> we're going to make our shrimp. We're going to make the sauce. And then we'll toss our noodles in the sauce. It'll all come together beautifully. I'm down at the bottom. One moment, please. Sorry. That wasn't elegant, but I didn't want to waste. All right. Let's get this recipe up. For anyone who just joined, 
This is what we're making, shrimp scampi, and I've got the, uh, we'll get the ingredients out. By far, my favorite dinner for two to make is the saucy shrimp scampi. It comes together in one pan and under 30 minutes. Start out with a fresh baguette, cut it into slices, and then we're going to drizzle with some olive oil just like this. Pop in the oven to toast until beautifully golden, and when it comes out, we're going to brush it with a garlic clove. Now for the shrimp, we're going to butterfly it, and you could either leave the tail on or take it off, and then we're going to coat it in all our spices. Over high heat, sear the shrimp until it has some beautiful color, take out of the pan, and then toast your garlic in some butter. Then we'll add the chicken broth, red pepper flakes, black pepper, lemon juice, parsley, and lots of parmesan. Add the shrimp back in, toss, and that's basically it. All that's left to do now is enjoy with the crispy bread. Okay, so we're not doing the crispy bread. Thank you, Mona. Mona is here. If you all have a YouTube channel, if you have a family business, if you have anything that you want to shout out, you're here supporting me. I want to support you. Please put in the chat what you would like for us to know. All right, so I didn't print out the recipe. I did take screenshots. So let's get everything out and we'll see how closely we're going to make this. So again, this chef, I'm assuming it's Meridian and I did put the uh, link in the description. So one pound of large shrimp deveined and peeled. <clears throat> so one of the reasons why I wanted to um, make this recipe is because I had this bag of shrimp um, and y'all know seafood is expensive, right? So we want to go ahead and get this um, drained. This is from Walmart and I don't know if it's always fresh or if you was frozen, but it's coming out of the fridge now. So I don't have to thaw it. Genesis one says, why does it all look so easy? I'm not a cook. Are you talking about it is, I know what you mean, when you watch these like TikTok reels or Instagram reels and they're just like, and then all you do is this, poof, and then you have this beautiful plate. Y'all know it doesn't happen like that. That's why I love cooking live for you all and I hope it's helpful. You know, some people have commented that I should have stuff prepped in advance. I'm not doing that. I have my own reasons. No, I'm doing it from scratch. Um, this is um, my channel. However, comma, um, you all know that I am the daughter of a retired home economics teacher. And whenever my mom was cooking, my dad said, Maggie, in the kitchen. And so I remember watching my mom have multiple things going on the stove and it was just so much and she didn't take any shortcuts. And it was just like so intimidating, but baby steps and uh, we'll get there together. But uh, I understand. And any questions, you know, let me know. But like I say, I've been cooking since 1842. And uh, I remember when I was first married and I tried, I burned stuff, I oversalted stuff. It happens. So one, one day at a time. It's helpful. Ah, oh, Genesis one, happy to help. Mark says, it is concerning when they got to put basic instructions like remove the plastic. I know. What sort of folks out here cooking with the plastic still on the food? I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna get my little uh, low budget strainer and we're going to rinse. Um, I will rinse this shrimp off in the sink and then we'll just uh, set it here to um, drain. Sorry guys, I know that's loud. I think this is a steamer basket that probably belonged to some pot and pans I had a long time ago. I just use this to clean stuff. But again, like we've talked about, anytime you want to cook um, any type of protein, meat, you want to make sure it's as dry as possible. And y'all can see, you know, there's liquid in this bag, so we need to drain it off and I'm going to rinse it off. So I'm just going to put this in the sink and rinse it with uh, some water. And then we'll pat it dry. I kind of have my little technique of drying it. Oh. It's two in there. Come out. All right. Ugh. Let me rinse them off, y'all. Let me just clean the counter since I had this shrimp on here. Um, I 
All right, let's get rid of the smoothie. just get y'all know I clean as I go so it's just Lysol wipes chocolate solution is here howdy howdy hello thank you so much for being here I love that name I love chocolate Ooh, y'all! I have a chocolate dessert that was sent to me and I think I want to make it y'all want to see it's one of these that we make and then I have to like refrigerate it. It's another no-bake dessert. And it is a two ingredient recipe, I think. I'll show it to you guys when we come to a stopping point, but I have the ingredients. And I found out something about one of the chocolates that's approved for me. I was so excited. All right, let's get the shrimp here. Um, and I went ahead and threw the package away, but that was one pound of fresh shrimp. If you're buying frozen, let it thaw completely and then just account for the extra liquid. All right, so we got our shrimp here and it's been washed and rinsed off. I will go ahead and pat it dry um, or, you know, just dry it a little bit because when you sear it, you want that nice little crust on there. Uh, sure thing. Um, you want that nice little crust on there and that only happens when you get the meat and the oil together. If there's too much water between your meat and your hot pan, then it will splatter and um, pop you. Not trying to do that. So I'm just going to go in here with a paper towel and just kind of massage the shrimp. I'm just trying to get, you know, as much moisture off as I can. It's not the end of the world, but... <clears throat> If you guys saw yesterday, I made a birthday dinner and I did a nice uh, filet of salmon and I had to do the same thing. Literally flip it over with paper towel. All right, class. So you can see our shrimp is a lot drier than it was before. Not perfect, but neither am I. All right, let's see what else we got. A pound of shrimp half teaspoon smoked paprika and half teaspoon sweet paprika. I don't know the difference. I got a container over there that says paprika. So we're gonna get what I have. All right, <clears throat> so this is what we have class. I have two paprikas. I have both from the dollar store, one that just says paprika and one that says ground paprika. I don't know the difference between smoked and sweet, but this is an example where I'm just gonna use what I have. I try really hard to make recipes for the first time exactly the way they did, but that's how I have, you know, 50, 11 spices over there. I buy them for one recipe. So let's see, what is the ingredient here? Ingredient is paprika and this one, Ingredient, paprika. All right, got paprika. Um, let's see what else. We're going through the ingredients at the top. We need shrimp, we got that. We got two paprikas, got that onion powder. I got onion powder. All right, I think this came in one of the food giveaway boxes. So this one at the top won't close all the way. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have an accident. Oh, does it just got, okay, there we go. So this says granulated onion or what? Excuse me, cebolla in polvo, I guess pound onion, but this is onion powder because you got the little granules in here. All right, so we got onion powder next. One teaspoon dried oregano. Do I have oregano? Uh-oh, did I say something wrong? Uh-oh. Oregano. I don't have... I don't have just basic oregano, but what I do have is this Italian seasoning, which has oregano in it. And since this is a shrimp scampi, which I believe is an Italian dish, we're gonna use the Italian seasoning. Maybe I'll get some oregano, but y'all can't do, I can't be all things to all people. 
All right, so we got our oregano-ish. Half teaspoon cumin. I do have cumin. What is cumin? I don't know, but it's used in a lot of Latin cuisine, so I have it. All right, what else? Salt, pepper, and olive oil. All right. Salt and pepper, and <clears throat> and if Claudel is back, I thought about you. I, I do have actual olive oil, so I'm going to use this. I usually use my coconut oil. Y'all know oils are important back there. The oil that's been approved for me is the MCT oil. What? Um, the MCT oil, but for this recipe, we'll go ahead and use some olive oil. Oh, you thought I was wearing a dress, huh? Usually I do. I love dresses. I'm trying to, y'all know I've been inspired by the 50s, and so I do throw back. I love the throwback dresses, but in all honesty, and you'll see when I take this apron off, this is kind of like a, a puffy kind of top and it makes me look bigger than I wanna be. It doesn't really have a shape to it. So every once in a while when you see me wearing something that's different, I've gone into my closet just to see how it fits and if it's too big on me, which is a good problem to have, this is gonna go in the donate pile so you won't see it again. So yeah, I just put on some khaki pants. It's an old navy top. Okay, so we got our shrimp ingredients. Now we need the scampi sauce. Let me just see what this Okay. I'm just reading to see if I need to get the ingredients for the sauce. Step one, in a large bowl, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get the shrimp together. In a large bowl, add the shrimp. Optional is to butterfly the back of each shrimp to make them large. I'm not doing that. I'll show you guys what it is, but I'm not doing that. Let's get a bowl. So we're gonna go ahead and cook all of the shrimp. We'll eat half today on the um, zucchini noodles and then tomorrow we'll do the wraps. So I'll put these back and we'll do spring roll, shrimp spring rolls tomorrow. <clears throat> right. So what does it say? In a large bowl, add the shrimp. Bowl. Meat shrimp. All right, that's done. One moment. <laughs> All right. Let's start this. All right. Never mind my dishwasher. Oh, I should have put this in there. Clean as I go. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Um, okay, it says optional butter on step one. Butterfly the back of each shrimp to make them large. I'm not doing that. Ah. All right, sorry y'all, somebody's coming to pick up something. I'm gonna give you some music. Genesis 1 has a question. Why is it called Scampi? Is the sauce named after someone named Scampi? I don't know, but let's ask the robot. Alexa, what is shrimp Scampi?
All right, so what did it say? Were y'all able to hear that or no? Alexa, where did shrimp scampi come from? It says shrimp scampi originated from Italy. That's not very helpful. So if somebody knows where shrimp scampi came from, please let us know. Sorry guys, I gotta get the boys' uniforms embroidered. They had until Labor Day to get it done. And of course we need new sizes on everything, so forgive me. Okay, back to the recipe. Oh, we were gonna talk about butterflying your shrimp. Actually, so the shrimp have been peeled into veins. So peeled means that the shell is off. So we just have the shrimp meat. And then that vein that runs through the back has been removed because who wants to eat that? And then to butterfly the shrimp, you would literally like, you could go through them one by one with a knife. I'm just gonna go through the little like vein hole, cavity thing. And you just literally, you could do this with a knife. Presentation is nice, but like I said, I'm not doing that. Not for this pound of shrimp, but you can cut them probably cut them more than this and, you know, just kind of open them. So, you know, y'all know what butterfly shrimp is. All right. So that's that. And it's optional. So we are going to skip that option. Step two, season the shrimp with paprika, onion powder, oregano, cumin, salt, and pepper. Okay. So let's start with paprika. How much paprika? Half teaspoon of each. My measuring spoons and cups are just... Oh, this one isn't open yet, y'all, so I'm just going to use the one that's open. So I don't really know the difference between smoked paprika and sweet paprika. If you can tell, the, tell me the difference, please do. But it's a half of each, and since I only have one paprika, we're going to do one teaspoon of paprika. Oh, dear. So we got one teaspoon measure. Get that level. Shake off the excess. Get that level. Let's put that all over our shrimp. You want to season it well. And uh, we're going to mix it together, but just let it kind of have a paprika bath. I'm not even a big paprika person. What does it do? I guess it adds color, but paprika doesn't really do much for me. But that's okay. We're following the recipe. Onion powder is next. How much onion powder? Half teaspoon. So I'll just I need to get one of those measuring things where they're all together because the stuff just disappears. All right, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. This is one teaspoon, so let me try and pour half. All right, we'll call it a half teaspoon of onion powder. And I'm just shaking that on there. Get some nice onion flavor. What else do we need on our shrimp? Oregano, which I don't have. We're gonna use Italian seasoning. A whole teaspoon of oregano. So we're gonna use a whole teaspoon of Italian seasoning which has oregano in it, so. And this shrimp comes from Italy. The robot said so. All right, so we're going to do, ooh, a full teaspoon of oregano. All right, let's see what's next. Cumin. Still don't know what that is, but I have it. Half teaspoon. So we got the cumin. This does have like a very like earthy, kind of herby kind of, 
don't know. It doesn't do much for me. I'm like a salt pepper, maybe lemon pepper, soul food seasoning, barbecue, onion, garlic. I mean, that's it. All this other stuff. But hey, it's all good. Half teaspoon. All right, we're going to call it half teaspoon of cumin. Coming together nicely. I know y'all like the close-up. I keep forgetting. All those different colors and textures. And then I think all that's left is salt and black pepper. How much salt and pepper? It says half teaspoon, but it's really salt to taste. This is uh, pink Himalayan salt. It says half teaspoon or more to taste. So... Season it generously with salt and then a quarter teaspoon pepper. With salt and pepper, do it until you feel like that's good. All right, so we got all our seasonings in here. Now, what does it say? I think we need to mix it together. I saw her doing it with her hands, which is fine, but I'll just get a spoon so I don't get, you know, fishy fingers. It's not the end of the world. You can use gloves or whatever. All right, so really all we wanna do is just make sure that all of our shrimp is coated well with the seasoning. So, you know, get in there with your hands or you can use two utensils. For me, when I'm seasoning, I just want every piece of flesh to have, um, you know, good seasoning on it. So you can kind of look at it and tell, you know, if you have some that's more seasoned than others, you know, you just want each bite to kind of be a little bit uniform. And shrimp by nature is a very mild flavor. So, you know, I would probably err on the side of a little extra. All right, our shrimp is nice and seasoned. All right, so let me read ahead because I think now we need to get the sauce ingredients. So step three, add, let me just read it y'all, add olive oil to a pan over medium high heat. So we are going to get the um, cooktop out. Once hot, add in the shrimp, making sure not to overcrowd them. That lowers the temperature of the pan. I don't always do that, but that's what that means. Sear on one side for two minutes or until golden and then flip over to sear the other side. Remove from the pan once fully cooked. Okay, let's go ahead and cook our shrimp and then we'll make our sauce. So cook top. Link is in the Maggie uh, cheat sheet. This is the duck's top induction cooktop that I like to use when I'm cooking for y'all. And um, I'm gonna be using cast iron because it only works for me with cast iron and stainless. Plus for something like this where you're going to do the meat and then we're gonna do the sauce and I'll put the pasta in, cast iron is great to like serve with and it'll keep it warm. So we've got our cast iron cleaned and seasoned. And y'all know you store in the uh, oven too. All right. All right, so let's see. We're just gonna sear. <sighs> Add the olive oil. How much olive oil? Two tablespoons, okay. So we've got this Bertoli olive oil. It says it's authentic. It looks authentic. So let's use our olive oil. And we'll put two tablespoons. So we have two tablespoons. And let's pour our oil. All right, 
I'm gonna put this in the pan. And then before I turn it on, I'm just gonna move it around the pan to make sure I don't have any dry spots because we want every piece of that skillet to get some, I was gonna say butter love, but it's not butter. So I'm just picking it up and moving it around the pan so I don't have any dry spots. All right, I think she said medium high heat, let's see. Add olive oil to a pan over high heat. On this cooktop, I'm gonna do medium high, medium heat because this gets hot fast. Mona, thank you for dropping the cheat sheet. All right, excuse me. So with the oil, um, lots of different ways to tell when your oil is ready. Some people do a little drop of water so it'll sizzle. Eh, I'm not gonna risk my life for that. Um, Sometimes I'll put my hand over it just to see if I feel heat. It's getting there, but it's not hot yet. What I like to do is just wait for the oil to start dancing, which means it just moves on its own underneath the heat of the pan. Yes, and thank you all for liking the video. If you like what I'm doing. Y'all, I have the best, aw, while we're waiting for this to heat up. Let me just thank you all again just for being here and for helping the channel to grow. And I have a special thank you for our ninja watchers. Those of you, I don't know who you are, but I love you just the same. I went to curriculum night for Marcus's school last night for those of y'all who have these kids in school. All right, you can see it's moving on its own and kind of dancing a little bit. Um, so that's good. Let's see. Put it on for two minutes and then flip over to the other side. So I'm going to, I'm coming back to the story. So this has been seasoned and it's good that it was kind of sitting here for a minute just to let that seasoning kind of get in there. I'm going to place them one at a time by hand. Ooh, it's jumping already. So seafood can get rubbery very quickly. You don't want to overcook it. Just when it starts to get pink and curl up, it's ready. So she says two minutes each side. Smells good. That cumin, I think, oh, popped me, got me. <clears throat> that cumin has like a smokiness. See, I wanna be greedy and put all of it in there, but let's not overcook the pan. When you're searing, oh, Alexa, set a timer for one and a half minutes. Hey, Monica. When you're searing, you want that nice like crust and brown color. And you get that from high heat or medium high heat. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit since this is shrimp. And leaving it so that it gets like that constant connection with the hot pan and the oil. Ooh, so good. And then we'll turn it over with tongs. No, it smells amazing. When food is seasoned well and you just start it cooking, oh, so good. Resist the temptation. I know you want to get in there, but if you want to sear, if you just want to cook it, you can move it around. But hopefully we'll have a nice like crust on there. We'll turn it over and do two more minutes. But anyway, I was at curriculum night for Marcus's school yesterday. And I saw um, a friend of mine, another parent, who, my camera crooked? Anyway, I saw another parent when the boys were in Boy Scouts. We've tried everything, y'all. Basketball, soccer, Boy Scouts. Now we have swim shading. All right, we got 10 seconds. And then we're going to turn them. I really could just go ahead and start now. Hopefully y'all are able to see Alexa, stop. Hopefully y'all can see that crust as I turn that sear. Alexa, set a timer for one and a half minutes. Alexa. Set a timer for one and a half minutes. Okay.
so y'all see what's happening here. Oh, let me get a place to put them because we need to take them off. I'm going to put them on parchment and just keep them in the air fryer because I was just going to put them all in a bowl, but I think they would get like soft. I know, I like the food summer. Parchment paper has been treated with silicone, so it's uh, good for non-stick. 30 more seconds. Okay. So anyway, I saw this other mom and, you know, how are the, how's the husband, how are the kids, all that. And uh, she told me this funny story. I thought it was really sweet. Um, you know, she's never commented on a video, but she encouraged me in what I'm doing. And she said that... Uh, 10 seconds. She said that uh, one day, like her husband was watching, you know, they all watch the videos. Okay, one second, y'all. So hopefully y'all can see. Got a nice here. So let's take off our shrimp and we're going to do the rest of them. Alexa, stop. And of course, we're going to taste one for research purposes. So shrimp, as long as the pan is hot, two minutes per side, it's fine. Oh, this one doesn't want to come off, so you know what that means. It needs some help. Hmm. Hmm. Let's do the rest. God, and it's smoking, y'all. Oh, turn it down. in the pan when we have the sauce but we got a pound of shrimp so I want to get all of this goodness up and I did turn it down this um cooktop gets really hot so I'm going around the edges where there's still some seasoning stop it up stop it up y'all remember we talked about that all right so we've used up all of our shrimp Monica Looking good. Thank you, Maya. Alexa, set a timer for one and a half minutes. So anyway, she was just supporting me and encouraging me on the channel. Uh-oh, y'all look who's here. Somehow I just knew when I was cooking shrimp that mom would appear. I'm making a whole pound, mom, so yes, they're looking good. They're sizzling up nicely. I'll have extra if you want some. But she was encouraging me on my channel. Y'all, it's kind of smoky. <clears throat> I think I'll make an iced coffee or something. And uh, those of you all who have been here since before Maggie was monetized, let me try and turn that. Um, you remember we were getting our watch hours up. And she said, like, late one night, after everybody was down, she came downstairs or whatever, and she heard my voice like in the house and she was like, what is going on? And uh, her husband was playing my videos on repeat to help me um, get my watch hours up because to be monetized on YouTube, you have to have at least 4,000 watch hours. And that was just super nice. And you know, you'll never see them here probably. But um, I just so appreciate you all when you're here supporting it helps the channel to grow. So I did turn this down a little bit it's cooking up nicely. We got 10 seconds left and we'll turn these over. So just two minutes per side. So thank you all for liking the videos. Thank you all for sharing the videos. Thank you all for, all right, it's done. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. 
you can see the center got really hot. We won't waste. Just turning these over so they can get that nice sear. And then we'll put them with the other shrimpies. Nana likes shrimp and so does Marcus. Her and her grandson, they love shrimpies. Okay, so let's see what's next. We got two minutes on this. All right. <clears throat> to the same pan, add butter and minced garlic. How much butter? Quarter cup. Alexa, stop. All right, I think I'm just going to take them out, y'all. The timer thing was giving me... Yes. Y'all can hear that? It's crazy. All right. I think this looks good. We got a two, we got a couple that are what we call Cajun, but I think y'all would still eat it, right? It's still good on the inside. Just got a nice little sear. All right. Let's take these out with the other shrimp. We're coming back to make our sauce. I'm just going to put them on top of the other shrimp. All this will go back in. We just got to make our sauce in here. Smells amazing. Alexa, stop. So some of them got a nice sear. Some of them look a little bit soft, but I think they look good. I think you all think they look good. I unplugged it for now just because this thing runs so hot. Oh my gosh, I had one that didn't want to come off. I was like, do I need to eat another for research purposes? All right, so our shrimp has been cooked and I'm just going to put this in the air fryer to hold until we put it back in here with the sauce. But I know y'all like the, um, the close up. Put them on top of a salad. Oh, all right. Shrimp is done. Now we're going to use all this goodness and make our scampi sauce. So it calls for butter. How much butter? Quarter table, quarter cup. That's a lot. So you all know I avoid cow dairy. So this is what I use, the Delamere goat's butter. <laughs> Genesis is here for the dance. So I have a little bit of goat's butter already, but I know this isn't a quarter cup, so I'll do a nice little pat. This came from Whole Foods. And I'm not as good as mom as cooking everything together. So I turned this off, but I'm going to put everything in here and then turn it on and make our sauce. But you can see the pan is still hot. So our butter is melting. Scampi is a... <clears throat> oh, God. I didn't mince the garlic. Oh, shucks. Here we go. I should have had everything together. All right, got the butter in there. Butter and the garlic. How much garlic? One and a half tablespoon. That's not much. Now, I do have the minced garlic that you can spoon, but I'm going to go ahead and do it from scratch. Mom is here watching. Let me get a couple garlic cloves. So we'll just let that kind of sit over there. I've got some fresh garlic here. So I'll pop off a few cloves and we'll see, you know, tablespoon and a half. I'm eyeballing three or four. So let's go ahead and cut into these. All right. 
ideally you would have everything prepped in advance, but that would make me a real cooking show. And I am not. All right, so let's mince this garlic. But we got people here who are a little intimidated to cook, I understand. So garlic is a great flavor, but it's a little hard to get into. It's got this weird papery skin. Peel off what you can, then use the flat side of a chef's knife and smash it with the palm of your hand. And that just kind of puts a little tear in here that makes it easy to peel. So your proper garlic before you dice it should be this nice, smooth, onion, oniony looking thing, not the paper. All right, so let's go with three of these. There's one. And yes, you can buy this already jarred, but you know, fresh is best when you have it. So, you know, give it a try. All right, garlic clove number two. If you saw the video we played from the beginning, I'll play it again in a moment. Um, so we have garlic clove number two. <sighs> she made this shrimp scampi on um, like a nice baguette, crusty bread. <sighs> so like we did before, you could take your olive oil, get your bread of your choice. We did sourdough for the kids. Get your nice crusty bread, toast it or grill it. I think we grilled ours. And then... Um, Drizzle it with olive oil, cut one of these in half, and just rub on the toasted bread. The smell alone, oh, the smell alone. All right, so let's get in here. And a mince is just like a really small cut. I'm not really great with knife skills, but I just go through and kind of slice it up first. Let's see. So we have our garlic <clears throat> kind of sliced, but minced is really small because we just want the garlic flavor. We don't want big chunks of garlic in our bite. So I'm just going to use a rocking motion. Try to break up the big pieces. I've taught both boys how to cook. My mom taught me and my brother how to cook. All right. Whew. So let's see if we have a tablespoon and a half. All right. So you all can see, got our garlic minced up, mostly small pieces. You know, all of these what do they call them? Aromatics, onion, garlic. Just like with the pepper grinder, you get the best fragrance and the best flavor when you cut it fresh. So the ones that are in the fridge, they'll do, but you know, they just, the oils have already been released. Uh, the shrimp looks just right. Thanks, Lou. All right, let's get this. Did I read it? To the same pan. So we got our butter has completely melted over here. I turned it off, but it's cast iron butter and garlic, saute for a minute and then add lemon juice to deglaze the pan. All right, so let's turn this back up. Oh, I didn't measure it. Oh no. Okay, this call, let me just get everything together y'all, sorry. This calls for chicken broth and I don't have it. I'm gonna have to make it, so it's okay. So we need a tablespoon and a half of minced garlic, black pepper, red pepper flakes, these are red pepper flakes, the ones that you would put on your pizza, two tablespoons of lemon juice, I don't have fresh lemon, I used it up. have a half a lemon. It's looking a little sad, but let's see if we can get some lemon juice out of that. We'll squeeze that. Half cup chicken broth. Okay. I looked, I could have sworn I had chicken broth, but Nana taught me. I have chicken bouillon. Mm. 
so these Maggie cubes, these are chicken broth, chicken bouillon cubes that came in the giveaway box. So I'm going to dissolve this in hot water to make my own chicken broth. That is a great, if you're trying to, I don't know, fast or it's late and you don't want to eat real food, but you just have a taste for something, drinking warm chicken broth. Sometimes I'll just put like the little seasoning packs from the ramen noodles. I don't have to watch sodium. I do have to watch sugar with some hot water from the Keurig and just sip on it in a mug. So you kind of get that chicken savory, mm, but you're not consuming, you know, too much calories. Just a suggestion. All right. So this says dissolve one cube in half a quart. Alexa, how much is half a quart? Alexa, how many cups are in a quart? Okay, so I have, yes, two cups. Oh, Leanne's been making the egg rolls. All right, so I'm just gonna run some hot water through the Keurig, y'all. This is a little bit janky, but we're gonna get it. Ideally, if you have chicken broth, you would just pour, but I don't. So we're gonna make chicken broth from a bouillon cube. So we need two cups, which is this. I'm just gonna get regular water. If you're like my mom, you have a hot water kettle always on, but I don't. So I'm gonna run this to the Keurig. You can use the Keurig to make hot water. Oh yes, thank you for liking the video on your way in. Leanne sent me some beautiful pictures, y'all. She made the Big Mac egg rolls, but she made a spinach and cheese one. Looks amazing. All right, let's see if we can get our measurements while we're doing this. So if you're following the recipe, we are in the scampi sauce. I got a quarter cup of butter already melted in here. I had to turn it off because I wasn't ready. We're coming back. One and a half tablespoons of garlic. So we've got our two tablespoons measure. So if this almost fills it up, then I'll call it one and a half. May need, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I almost feel like you should have one more, but at this point, it's fine. All right. Quarter teaspoon black pepper, we'll figure that out. One teaspoon red pepper flakes, we'll get that. Two tablespoons lemon juice. Let's see if we squeeze our lemon juice, how much we actually get. This is looking like had better days but maybe there's some juice in there and I've heard you can um, put your limes I think it was Leanne that sent me the video you could put your lime um, in the microwave whole lime I wouldn't do it exposed like this and um, for like what 30 seconds and then it'll get juicier all right so let's see what we can get out of here hot water is almost ready Need to run one more cycle. All right, so we've got our juicer and I've got some zest in there. We're gonna put that open side down and we're gonna squeeze it like our life depends on it. See if we can get some juice. If not, I do have the um, concentrate juice Oh dear. Yes, mom. Mom says she agrees. Use non-chemical cubes or soup powders to make broth. Oh yes, mom uses those Lipton soup mixes a lot for flavor. Mm -hmm. 
So let's see if we can get lemon juice here. Is this what they say? You're trying to get something out of a rock or a turnip? Or... Okay, we're breaking through. Okay, I got more than two tablespoons. Like, oh, Maggie don't have hand strength like that, but we got fresh lemon juice and that looks like more than two tablespoons, so that's good. All right, so our hot water is done. Let's see if we can make our broth. So let's move this over here with the garlic. And remember, I'm not gonna toss this. I will make a pitcher of tea and put this in the tea. All right, always three ways to use a lemon. We zested it, we got the rind off or whatever I was making that day, juiced it and soak it. <laughs> Monica, you got that lime juice you needed? Okay. Oh boy. All right, I got hot water. Let me just move this for a second. Got our gravy boat, let's move our garlic, let's just move everything so, and our lemon so I don't have a disaster. So we're having to make um, chicken broth. Okay, move our garlic. Okay, so I got my trusty gravy boat. Some of y'all like this, I love using this. It just makes me feel fancy, make a wish. Um, link is in the description and it allows me to see. So I have a chicken bouillon cube. Looks kind of weird, but this is what I had. And you can dissolve it in hot water, boiling water to make chicken broth. So, I got two cups of water from the Keurig. And I'm gonna Uh-oh, y'all, I may need a bigger container. Let me just stir it up and we'll pour it. I probably should have dissolved it in a smaller amount. I meant to do this first, but hopefully it doesn't take too long. As I make the chicken broth, hopefully everyone is doing well. Hope you have had a good week. I can feel it around in there. I can see it. I'll get a bigger bowl or I'll just pour it back in here. No need to make extra dishes. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh yes, half cup of chicken broth. Oh, so we don't need all of this, only a half cup, okay. And then a quarter to a third cup of grated Parmesan. So y'all know that I avoid cow dairy. So if you have Parmesan, if you can have some, have some for me. I'm gonna go ahead and shred my manchego. So why don't I do that? Let me take this out for now. And we're just gonna let it sit in here for a second <clears throat> in the hot water, then I'll give it one more stir. Go ahead and grate the cheese. And then it says parsley. Let's see if I have fresh parsley. And then that's it. We'll make our sauce, toss our shrimp in, and we're good to go. All right, so I'm just gonna move this so our broth can So let's shred the cheese. Not much, a quarter to a third cup. All right. So manchego cheese is my substitute for Parmesan. It is sheep's milk cheese, which I know sounds weird. It is a dry aged salty cheese from a city in Spain called Manchego. But if you can't have dairy and you want a Parmesan substitute, this is what I use. So I'll show you. I'm just gonna do this by hand. I don't think I have the one with the label on it, but this comes, um, unfortunately, I don't have the, I can't use the shakeable powder one, but this manchego cheese comes from a cheese wheel. So literally I have just cut off a little wedge and then I cut off the little wax pieces here. And so this is my sheep's milk cheese. It's nice and salty. You can melt it on stuff. You can, um, this is probably about a quarter. It says a quarter to a third cup. So we're just gonna grate all of this. I'm not even gonna measure it. That looks 
perfect to me. Let's see, let's get a bowl. And I'm just gonna grate it by hand. And then we'll see if I have some parsley. The parsley that I saw is looking kind of sad. I'm just going to grate all of this. Oh, I should have used that salad shooter. I forget sometimes, y'all, that I have these gadgets. So you see what we're making here? A nice shredded cheese. That's going to go in our scampi sauce. I'm just going to keep... Oh, this might be more than a quarter third cup. I may only need half of it. Yeah, that's looking. <clears throat> so we got a quarter cup measure. We have a heaping quarter cup. So yeah, more than enough. I'm just going to cut off a piece here for research purposes and bag up the rest. Kitchen snacks for me, I snack on protein, eggs, cheese, jerky. You can have this with the crackers of your choice. It's a drier cheese, kind of like a sharp, sharp cheddar. I like it. It's grown on me. Got the cheese, please. Freshly grated. All right. Let's clean up. Bag this up. Let's see how that parsley's looking. It wasn't looking too good. If it were just me, I would eat this. <laughs> but I'll toss it. All right. And then last thing was two tablespoons of parsley, finely chopped. Let's look at this parsley we have, y'all. Y'all know how I am with herbs. So I do have some parsley here. Uh, two tablespoons is not a lot. I'll just grab, you know, it just looks so sad. And I'm not even a big parsley person, and I don't like the stems. It just smells like, I don't like it by itself, but as an ingredient, it is nice. To me, when I just tear it like this, it smells like grass. It smells like I've been playing outside in the grass. All right, let's wash and chop. Two tablespoons is the same as that garlic. This is, that's more than enough for sure. But let's just go ahead and get this handful washed. Finely chopped. See how fine we can chop it. Same technique as the garlic. Chop what you can. Oof. Man, when you cut into fresh herbs, you really get that, um, that for me, grassy smell. Should I use a bigger cutting board? Like I have. I don't have enough space for the rocking motion. 
And the mom would be like, just reuse the dishes. I got the dishwasher running now. Use everything. chopped as we're gonna get All right. oh let's mix the rest of the chicken broth so we have our parsley we have our cheese we have our garlic We have our homemade chicken broth that I need to dilute. Let me just stir, make sure there's no more cube in there. We have our freshly squeezed lemon juice. All right, so chicken bouillon cube has completely dissolved, but I had some more boiling hot water. So I'm actually gonna pour this back in here so we get the proper consistency of the chicken broth. So, bouillon cube, hot water. We don't need all of it, just a little bit. So we'll set that there. You can use that for chicken noodle soup or whatever. And my phone just died. Oh, ah, I should have charged it. Okay. I'll just take my iPad down. Thank you so much, Instagram, but I need this device. All right. So let me show you guys what we're making. We've made our shrimp. It's warm in the air fryer. We're about to make our scampi sauce and then toss in our zucchini noodles. All right. So let me show you guys. For anybody who just joined what we're making. Y'all know me and the food is everywhere. All right make is the saucy shrimp scampi. It comes together in one pan and under 30 minutes. Start out with a fresh baguette, cut it into slices, and then we're going to drizzle with some olive oil just like this. Pop in the oven to toast until beautifully golden, and when it comes out, we're going to brush it with a garlic clove. Now for the shrimp, we're going to butterfly it, and you can either leave the tail on or take it off, and then we're going to coat it in all our slices. Over high heat, sear the shrimp until it has some beautiful color, take out of the pan, and then toast your garlic in some butter. Then we'll add the chicken broth, red pepper flakes, black pepper, lemon juice, parsley, and lots of Parmesan. Add the shrimp back in, toss, and that's basically it. All okay. that's left to do now is enjoy with the crispy bread. By far, my favorite okay. dinner for two tonight so, is the sauce. Let's scampi. Hopefully I saved the recipe. Okay, so we got our scampi sauce. We got our butter. Yes, butter is melted. It's coming back in the frame. We got our butter. We have our garlic, pepper, pepper flakes, lemon juice, chicken broth, Parmesan, and parsley. All right, so now let's see what do we do with it all. Okay, so we cooked our shrimp. Let me just move everything out of my way. Our homemade chicken broth. All right, so this is our melted butter, still kind of warm. Y'all, if I get to a point where I'm getting overwhelmed, I will turn off the pan. It will be all right. All right, so we're going to put this back on. I'm going to do like a medium low because to the same pan, add the butter and the garlic. Garlic coming up. So this is the garlic that we minced. It's supposed to be one and a half tablespoons. Smells amazing. Saute the garlic for one minute and then add lemon juice to deglaze the pan. And y'all note that uh, we have all these sticky bits in here from when we cook the shrimp. So when we add the lemon juice in there, that's going to unstick it. 
I don't know if that's a word, but I just said it. All right, so it's starting to percolate a little bit. Probably should have still been hot, but I wasn't ready. What was I gonna make, some tea? I'll make some more peach tea. Pitcher of water. didn't get my alkaline drops. I'm just going to put water in the curing. <clears throat> I'm waiting for this to come alive. Oh, how about three? Let's go up to three. I'm going to fill this with ice. Alexa, set a timer for one minute. Oh, smell. If y'all like garlic butter. How much lemon juice? Just to be ready. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. So what's in here is all the sticky bits from the shrimp that we cooked. Goat's butter for me, could be regular butter for you. That's where we're getting that nice foam from. It smells amazing. If I were a piece of bread, I would want to float <coughs> in here. I'm just moving the garlic around so it doesn't burn. I still feel a little bit of sticky bits underneath the spatula. Cooking can be very therapeutic if you allow it. Just kind of that repetitive motion after a long day or after a long week. I didn't always love it. But being home in the pandemic and after has been a blessing for me. Okay, Alexa, stop. Two tablespoons of the lemon juice we just squeezed. So we got our two tablespoons measure. Still has a little bit of olive oil in it, but it's okay. Oh, it's almost all. I'm gonna put all. Oh, y'all, that acid from the lemon juice just gets all those sticky bits up off because we want that in our sauce. Y'all, it looks like I'm getting a facial. My poor curls aren't going to last. That's all right. It's worth the shrimp scampi sauce. Oh, focus, Maggie. Scrape the bottom of the pan and add the chicken broth and red pepper flakes. How much chicken broth? Half a cup. All right, let's make sure I scrape... Y'all can see when I scrape now, it's pretty clean. That's what that lemon, lemon juice just did. I gotta taste this. Mom said taste as you go. <laughs> Y'all, come to mama. You like my facial? <laughs> Maggie, have you had such good skin? <laughs> Cooking like this? All right, focus. I need half a cup. This is two cups. So I only need, I'm pouring and I'm looking at the measure until I get to one and a half. This is our homemade chicken broth. Okay. So I'm stopping at half a cup. Add chicken broth and red pepper. How much red pepper? One teaspoon. I'm just going to I know this is a tablespoon. You know what, at this point. I'm sure with red pepper, if Marcus were here, Swim Shady, you would do a lot more. If you don't like fire, you can do a little bit. Crushed chilies. All right, let's see what else. Bring the broth to a boil and then lower the heat. So it's boiling, let me just mix it all together. And I'm gonna give it one more taste just for heat. See if I need any more red pepper. And we'll go back to making our tea. So we've got that chicken broth in here with the lemon juice and the butter and the garlic. Ooh, yeah, that red pepper creeps up on you. I was gonna say, it's not hot. Give it a moment. All right, 
So that's a nice little simmer. It says bring it to a boil. So I'll go up to like a boil and then we'll take it down. Yeah, we're boiling. Okay, okay. Let's go down. Let's go down to one. Lower the heat. Then it says add the Parmesan and parsley. All right. Y'all ready for the cheese, please? And the cheese, we're kind of thicken it up too. All right. If you have Parmesan, use Parmesan. Y'all know I'm dairy free. So this is my manchego. This is the sheep's milk cheese that we just shredded. Y'all know we're greedy. Not even gonna play. Groceries are expensive. So we got the cheese in there. Now we're gonna put the parsley in there. Oh, how much parsley? Only two tablespoons. So the parsley that we just cut up, we got one tablespoon. Let's see how much I cut up. Here's one. Parsley does make it look good, even though it smells like a grass football field. Parsley is in. I know my scholars like the close-ups. Ooh, be careful, this is liquid. Oh yeah. All right, let me stir, get that cheese nice and melted. Finally add back in the shrimp. Hold up, let's get this all in here. This could be a sauce over the pasta, which it will be. I'm trying to think how I wanna do that zucchini. This could be a dipping sauce. Let's taste. Ooh. That cheese has like a sharpness that I like. I could probably go with a little bit more pepper. I know my mom is probably like, she says combine all together and adjust to your liking. So I'm just doing a little bit more black pepper. And then who remembers these that we sauteed at first? This one looks like it needs a little. Sauce is good. I added a little bit more pepper. Percolating slowly. I'm going to take, I'm going to put the uh, shrimps in here. Shrimp. And I'm going to take a picture and then I'm gonna take everything out. Monica says it looks good. Thank you, my dear. Woo! Get me. <coughs> I like it. Another sugar-free, dairy-free, and about to be gluten-free. All right, so we got our shrimp in there. That looks good. This is not how I'm gonna serve it, but I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of parsley on here because when I stir it up, we're gonna get that shrimp scampi sauce over top of the shrimp, and I want the shrimp to kind of stand out, so. Even though I don't love, oh, did it die? Please don't tell me it died. Oh no. I don't want to touch it. Y'all, it died. Oh no, you need the over camera view. One second, I'm trying to think. I should have had this stuff plugged up, y'all. I'm sorry. Um, I can lift it up for you. But I want to take a quick picture. Let me just put the switch on the charger.
right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. All I did is unplug. I'm gonna bring you guys back on the phone that has a little bit of um, juice left in it. So you guys can see, I'm gonna take, oh, I'll take a picture with my iPad. So we did, oh crap, focus Maggie. Hope everybody is doing well. Okay, let's see. Let's get you guys in here so you can see what I'm doing. We're all spoiled now. Anybody who was here for day one, y'all remember when I had to hold everything up and I'm like, who does that now? We don't do that. All right, camera, yes. Microphone, no, because if not, we'll get that feedback. All right, let me see if I can set this up here. So y'all can see. It's a distant memory. I know we're so fancy now. All right, y'all can see. Okay, so whew, still a little warm. I just I just grabbed a little bit of parsley because I want to get a picture. All right, I'm gonna do just a little bit more as a garnish and then I'll show you guys. We're still gonna do the zucchini noodles and everything, but I just want, if you really like lemon, you could do like your lemon zest. I don't want it super, super lemony. All right, take a picture with my iPad. Oh my gosh, y'all, one of these days, y'all be like, remember when you had all these devices? Yes, I do. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm gonna bring it up so you can see. I just got gotta get pictures from every angle. Y'all know how we do. These are gonna go in the cookbook. Get up in there, get up on that food. Some with the flash, some without the flash. All right. Yes, Nana says over spaghetti squash, we're gonna do zucchini noodles. All right, so y'all, shrimp scampi is done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this back up and I'm going to No, I don't want to mess it up. I just I love this presentation. Here's where I'm thinking like should I take everything out of the pan and then saute the noodles in here? But I really like this presentation and I don't want it all messed up. So my instructions are either briefly saute, steam, or boil. I'll just saute a little bit in my coconut oil because I don't want to mess this up. I love it. Because this stuff, you don't want to overcook that uh, zucchini noodle. So this is done. Ooh. We're going to just move it behind me and I'm going to just warm up my zucchini. Um, I know Mark had asked if we were doing pasta. I'm doing a pasta substitute. <clears throat> so that'll stay nice and warm in the cast iron. Oh, we didn't make the tea. All right. So I'm going to turn, let me get a small skillet. I'm just making enough for me. The boys are with their dads. So I don't have to make a large portion. Um, so I'm going to turn this on, on low. I'm going to use my MCT. This is my coconut oil. It's not my favorite, but it's approved for me. So to saute, I'm just going to put, well, I need to refill it. Just want to oil the bottom of a pan. Not a lot, but just don't want any dry spots. And I'm not really a fan of stainless, but... This won't be in here long. All right, so let's open this up and we'll do half a portion. And saute, we're just gonna move it around in the pan so that it uh, heats up as my noodle substitute. And then we're gonna plate. So let's let this get a little bit hot in the meantime. So this is just fresh zucchini spiralized. So this is what is gonna be my 
pasta for the shrimp scampi. Ah, let me make my tea. So y'all remember we juiced the lemon. I'm gonna put it in the pitcher with the ice. This is our Lipton unsweet tea. It's gonna go in the Keurig, brew hot over ice. That's how we're gonna make our unsweet tea that we will sweeten. All right, so this is moving around now. I am just going to grab And you do want to season this. I would, I'm going to do some garlic salt because it's just, you know, plain veggies, which is fine. I think that portion is good. I'm just eyeballing it. A little garlic salt just so you have some flavor. Did I say just move it around in the pan? Oh, the oil. Yeah, just like you would salt pasta water. I put a little garlic salt on the zucchini. All right, I don't want it to stick. I just want it to heat. Our tea is done. So we have our unsweet tea with lemon. Smells amazing. Let me just move that around. All right, I'm gonna pour a glass of tea. This is looking good. It's kind of cooking down. I feel like I should have some more. What do y'all think? Is that enough uh, pasta? Give me a thumbs up if that's okay, or thumbs down if I need more pasta, just for one serving. Is that enough for you or more? Thumbs down if that's not enough. Thumbs up if it's good. Let me taste one just for saltiness. Woo, hot. Oh yeah, it's getting there. Needs a little bit more. Yeah, texture is good. I wanna pull it cause I don't want it to be too soft. Genesis says that portion is good. Okay. So let's plate. I'm thinking of my plate color. Yeah, let's do a white plate. <clears throat> or I could do a rectangular plate. I want the food to be the star. So if I'm cooking something light colored like eggs, Monica says portion is good. Y'all won't let me be greedy. That's all right. All right. So what we're going to do, this is our sauteed zucchini. Um, I'm going to put it here and I'm going to flatten it out. nice and warm. I probably should have used a smaller plate to make my portion look bigger than it is. But that's fine. That's a little trick I use eating on salad plates. All right, now, right now remember to take a picture. Y'all know I want to dive in there. All right, so we just saute our noodles. They're very tasty. Let's bring back our shrimp. more. Y'all, this is beautiful. I have to tell you, even with all my jankiness, look at that. All right. I think I will I want good presentation. So, I like the charred meat. I'm going to do 8 pieces of shrimp. Why? In my mind, that's a half a pound. 16 ounces, 16 pieces of shrimp. I made it up. Six, seven, eight. Then I'm going to pour some of this goodness on there. Looking good. Let me get a little spoon thingy. If you had like regular pasta, 
you could, um, that would just drizzle the whole. Picture time, picture time. Ah, iPad. Because this is going to die again, but I want y'all to see what we got. Our nice plate. Oh my God. Y'all see that? Oh, cookbook worthy, huh? Get up on it. All right. Several angles, sorry y'all. Cause once you eat it, looks so good. Monica's going to defrost her shrimp. All right y'all. Oh, I wanna have some tea, but oh, I can't wait anymore. Okay, let me just make a quick glass of tea. And then yes, I will get a seat and sit with y'all. I'm using the same peach tea we put in our smoothie. Anybody who's still rocking with me? Skinny syrup, zero calorie syrup. So just put in a little bit of peach flavor with unsweet tea. This is how you get your peach tea. So dinner. Okay, class, your dinner is ready. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all, we got to taste it. We got to taste it. got to taste it. Oh, I took the apron off already. I'm all excited. I'm like, get in my belly. Oh, okay. Focus, Maggie. All right, let's get that zucchini. Oh, Mama. Monica's looking. Genesis. Oh, oh my God. Mm. The savoriness of the shrimp, the saltiness of the chicken broth and the cheese, the brightness of the lemon. Oh, yeah, so good. We didn't even taste the tea. Oh, mama, y'all. Do I wish this were sourdough bread or some crusty baguette? Yes. However, comma, honestly, because the sauce has so much flavor, Monica's laughing at me. Really with noodles, it's just kind of that texture of the noodle that you want. It doesn't have to be like a grain. Y'all, when you eat the whole thing, Woo! let me get a chair. Oh, y'all, it's so good. Monica's laughing at me. I'm having a good time, y'all. Right. Let me sit down. So I'm not like a homeless person, right? Oh my goodness. All right, let's get a towel. Oh, this is the top I was talking about. See how it's just, it's gonna go. <clears throat> good problems, good problems. All right. I'll drop the link in case anybody wants to chat. If not, that's fine. I'm going to eat my dinner. And uh, what questions do you all have? Oh, battery's low.
Here we go. All right, we're charging. All right, let me sit down with you all. My lovely scholars, one moment. Hopefully you don't get motion sickness. Oh yeah, the over camera one died. I don't know if y'all still need that. If you do, I'll get it. But you saw the plant. Oh yeah, sorry y'all, my devices are telling me everything goes for about two hours, but I'm going to sit down and I'm going to enjoy my pasta. I'm calling it pasta. Shrimp scampi. Oh, thank you, Genesis, thank you. I uh, earned my food tonight. Yeah, part of, you know, enjoying your food you eat slower which is important for me and probably less all of the flavors come together and even stuff that i was like yeah, i don't really like parsley or too much lemon it's not overpowering this is <clears throat> perfect so we've got lots of sauce if you're a bread eater which i would love to be you could take your crusty bread and dip it in that um garlic sauce y'all Mm. And cooking the shrimp with a different set of seasoning, with the cumin and all of that, the shrimp has so much flavor on its own, even if you didn't do the sauce. I think the way she served it was like on crusty bread, put your shrimp on it, and then with whatever bread pieces are left over, dip in the scampi sauce. It's delightful. Oh, y'all. Y'all would eat this. I promise you, the zucchini noodles. I'm not a big pasta person, so I don't miss the pasta. You could drink this scampi sauce. It's just, it's like the perfect amount of... <clears throat> That brininess, like from the cheese, the lemon, oh, so good. So good. Mm. Mm. We'll do it tomorrow. I'll make breakfast for tomorrow. I've taken enough of y'all's time tonight. I got a couple more bites of this. Let me finish with a commercial if there are no questions. Um, I do have a course. Thank you all so much for being here uh, and supporting Maggie the Substitute Teacher. My YouTube channel is six months old because of you all being here, liking, sharing, subscribing. All of that is free. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's a bite for you of your garlic buttery sauce, shrimp sauce. <clears throat> I didn't know you could make income on YouTube, but I was monetized in four months. Y'all know I'm a proud student of the lead attorney. Learned so much from his course. I made my own specific to the monetization process on YouTube. What I did to get subscribers and watch hours and how the process works. I thought it was automatic. Excuse me. I thought as soon as mom was my 1,000th subscriber, it would just start raining money but you have to apply for the program and i cover all of that so i do have a link in the description it's two hours worth of content yes we're six months old genesis 
two hours worth of content. It's 15 different videos I put together walking you guys through my process. There's a free preview. If you want to click on the link, you can watch one video in its entirety and see if it's something for you. If you're thinking about a YouTube channel and you want to know how this monetization stuff works, maybe take a look. Oh, discount code is thanks TLA all together. Thanks TLA. Hmm. Mm. Y'all, one thing, now I will say this as I'm getting towards the end with the zucchini noodles, I'm loving it. I'm going to eat it. I've got like one more bite. For me, this is a perfect light dinner, sugar-free, gluten-free, and um, dairy-free. <clears throat> but the zucchini noodles or the zoodles, because they're like a fibrous vegetable, they're a little bit chewier than pasta. So you know when you bite into like a spaghetti, it just kind of dissolves because it's, well, unless you like it really al dente, it, but it's a softer texture. This is a little bit firmer. So paired with shrimp, which is a little tender, and your veggie, which is a little firmer texture, is a little different as the zucchini cools right out of the hot pan. It was nice and soft, almost creamy, but it's not stopping me. So hey, stay on track. You know I love lead attorney. I'm a proud student. He has been very instrumental. I'm part of his mastermind. Excuse me. And, um, you know, being able to turn like a passion project into a labor of love has been a blessing for me. Okay. So Monica has frozen zucchini noodles. So the ones that I used are fresh. Just know this with the frozen ones. Just like if you were going to do the frozen shrimp, when you thaw, I would thaw them out first. I would not cook them from frozen because you're going to get a lot of liquid, a lot of water from the ice crystals. So I would thaw your zucchini noodles. Then I would drain them. So just get whatever little strainer that you have and drain off as much of the water as possible. You want to try and get it. Let me show you. Oh, yeah. I'm down to the last little bit, y'all. Even if you're a vegetarian, the shrimpies are gone. Oh man. <clears throat> so this is what I have. This came from Whole Foods. Zuc oh, <laughs> I'm still acting like we have the overhead camera. The zucchini noodles. Sorry y'all, but you can see. Oh, can you see? I don't know. Okay. You can see how they're kind of dry. Try and get your frozen ones as dry as possible. You're so welcome, my dear. Anytime you cook from frozen, which is fine, but just know that try to thaw it and then try to drain it. Because what will happen is you'll have all the water from those ice crystals and then it'll throw off your, your pasta will be more soupy than pasta-y, if that's a word. Y'all, can somebody find me a biscuit? Y'all didn't give me much. All right. Let me stop now. But y'all, it was excellent. Excellent, excellent. So tomorrow, we have shrimp and sauce left. We're going to take the extra unless Nana wants it. And we're going to roll it up in like a spring roll paper with veggies. And I have a dessert I want to show you guys tomorrow. But I'm going to go ahead and dismiss. We went long tonight. Thank you all for keeping me company on a Friday night. I hope you have a great weekend tomorrow. I like to do breakfast to get it done early. Who says we can't have spring rolls for breakfast? It's dinner somewhere. We'll see. I live stream every day. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, I enjoy you so much. Thank you for being here and allowing um, me to share a meal with you. I hope you all have a great dinner if it's dinner time where you are when you're watching this. <clears throat> and I'll see you tomorrow because I stream every day.